Hi there, and it's welcome to another edition of uh, Starry Skies, this time for the month of June. So this is Mark Hardacre. And Steve Tonkin. And today we're going to be talking about uh, how the sun is going to disrupt our viewing in this month, uh, how we've got short nights, although warm days, but mm -hmm. us poor astronomers don't have much fun, really, do we? Enjoy? Well, unless we're solar astronomers, which we could talk, must talk about sometime, actually. Yeah, we should do that, really, talk about observing the sun. Be very careful, of course, never ever look at the sun directly with any form of optical aid. Yep. Anyway, why is the sun a pest this month? Because uh, it's the solar summer solstice. Uh, on the 21st of June at 3.57. So what's a solstice, Mark? I think that is when, it really means when the sun is at its highest in the sky. And that's um, in the, the, the sun will be in the constellation of Taurus. Mm -hmm. um, and the opposite to that, of course, is the winter solstice when the sun is as low as it can get in the sky. And then curiously, yeah. it's in the constellation of Mm, yeah, mm. Scorpius, I think, which we'll talk about <laughs> later. Cool. Yeah, yeah, and the other the other thing about the, the solstice, of course, summer solstice, is the sun rising and setting points are as far north as they get on the horizon. Yeah. So you get, you get to see lovely long summer nights and evenings, which is great. But unfortunately, very uh, short nights, and uh, our, the twilight then becomes... Well, very long. In fact, lasts all night. And sunset, uh, it's, it's a funny thing, isn't it? Sunset, we've got... Um, I'm making a mess of this. <laughs> we should start that again. So where do we start then? Um, so let's talk about uh, twilight, mm. shall we? So in the summer months, the sun goes down. So that's called sunset, of course. And... The sun then goes down six degrees below the horizon, and that's what we call civil twilight. Mm -hmm. so uh, it's civil because you can still carry on with your normal daily um, activities, uh, particularly this was in agricultural times. It's, it's not dark enough yet to require you to use artificial light. But, but you it, in our modern times, oh. we have to turn on our... That's when we have to turn our headlights on on our yep. car. That used to be called lighting up time. That it, used to be published in the newspaper when I was a kid. Do you remember that? Yes, I remember that. <laughs> lighting up time tonight is 7.22. Mm. Yeah, so, so the sun continues to sink below the horizon until it gets to 12 degrees below the horizon. And that's the start of what's called nautical twilight. What's that all about? Oh, that is when you can just still see... The distinction between a sea horizon and the sky. So, so, you, so if you're using old navigational instruments like uh, sextants, you can still take your sightings because you can still see where the horizon is just. But at the end of that, um, once the sun um, is, is more than that and it's, it's now down to 18 degrees below the horizon, we're now at astronomical twilight. In fact, we're then coming into astro dark. And astro dark means that we can see then the faintest stars yep. in the sky. Um, the Milky Way comes out. Um, but unfortunately, where we are here in uh, the new forest area, there's no astronomical twilight at all, is there? No, from um, about the last week of May up until the the third week of July, we we have abs we have no full astronomical darkness but that means it's something else so we don't get it because the sun is only just below the horizon when it's in the in the north of the sky so when we normally can't see it, it's hidden by the earth still but that does light up the the I'll start again with that one as well um, the sun is only just below the northern horizon at midnight and what that means is it, it will light up parts of the atmosphere it doesn't normally light up for us and we get these beautiful silvery clouds they call noctilucent clouds noctilucent means night shining and they're a feature of summer only yeah and we've seen them a couple of years back especially i don't remember when when uh, comet neowise was visible mm. uh, in the northern horizon i think that was in july 2020 20 yes it was when there was still lockdown so That's people yeah, and there, looking to the north, we could see these noctilucent clouds mm. uh, shimmering low in the northern horizon. So have a look for them during June and July. Yeah, uh, they're uh, they're quite easy to see around midnight. Uh, look to the north, and you'll see them. But as uh, we just said, twenty fourth of May until the nineteenth of July, no astronomical twilight yep. at all, which is a bit of a shame. But never mind, we can still use our binoculars and telescopes and naked eye 
to uh, have a look up in the sky. Mm. What about the planets in uh, June then, Steve? Oh, uh, it's got to be Venus. I yeah. mean, Venus is just so beautifully bright, it'll still be available in June. So if you want to look at a planet, you can see Venus. And it's actually a planet that if you've got a really clear sky, and we can hope, during daylight, you can see Venus without optical aid, provided you know exactly where to look. It's this intensely bright dot in the sky. Yeah, and, but of Kent... You've got to be very careful to make sure that when you're looking with your binoculars and your telescope while the sun's up, again, as I said earlier, make sure you don't point your telescope anywhere near the sun. Yeah. I th the safe way to do that is to stand in shadow to yeah. do it. Stand yeah. in Earth's shadow. That's then, a great way. Then, then, you then you've got no chance at all of, yeah. of getting the sun. So Venus is actually in the constellation of Gemini at the beginning of the month mm -hmm. of June and will pass into the constellation of Cancer uh, towards the end. And uh, if you... Train your telescope, biggish telescope with uh, good magnification, onto Venus during this time. You'll see it's a, a, like a half moon. It moves from being um, slightly more than a half moon to slightly less than a half moon during the month of June. And uh, it's getting bigger and bigger. It's getting closer and closer to us before in July and August it will rush between the Earth and the Sun. And it will become an ever bigger, ever skinnier crescent yeah. until it will disappear in front of the sun, uh, I think, during August, if I'm, if I'm correct. Yes, and it's, it's that phenomenon that enabled um, Galileo to work out that actually Venus did not go round the Earth. Venus goes round the sun. Yeah. Otherwise, you wouldn't get these phases, right. the complete set of phases that you get. And the other planet, of course, that uh, shows a similar effect is the planet Mercury, which was absolutely beautiful during the month of April mm. and into early May, but uh, unfortunately not visible this month, Steve. No, it's not. Um, a time to look, if, you, if you're looking for um, Venus, though, is to look on the night of the, of the 13th, in particular, where it's very, very close to... A little lovely little group of stars which you can see in the with your naked eyes a misty patch. We mentioned it last month. It's the Beehive Cluster or Pricepi in Cancer. And what date was that? That's again? on the thirteenth of, of June. It'll be just above it. Perfect with binoculars. That's in a real easy object for anybody with a decent pair of binoculars. Look at Venus on mm -hmm. the thirteenth, and right next to it you'll see this wonderful cluster called the Beehive. Uh, it was also in Messier, Mister Messier's catalogue. We'll talk about him in yeah. a minute. Uh, as number 44. 44. Yeah. Uh, and it's actually better in binoculars than in any sort of telescope, yep. just about, because it just overflows the view of a telescope. Yep. With binoculars, you get the whole thing, and you can appreciate it in total magnificence. Okay, so we've done the inferior planets, so that's Mercury and Venus, the two that are inside our orbit. So the what's happening out, with the other ones, then? Yeah, the one outside of us is Mars. Yeah. So how's Mars doing this month? Well, Mars is... Um, also around it's actually relatively close to um at venus and so we can see that but it's getting dimmer and dimmer and dimmer yeah and we really um are going to we're going to lose it eventually but mars has its rival which we're going to come to are mm. we not mark we are indeed. The, and so mars to the greeks was ares um that's the, the greek god of war ares and his antagonist is then Antares. And what is Antares? Uh -huh. <laughs> we'll come to that in a second. Well, let's finish with the planets. But okay. But, yeah, but bear that in mind, Antares. So, so Mars is, is fading away during this month, getting further and further from us. But rising in the east in the very early morning is Jupiter, which is the king of the solar system, of course, mm. the biggest planet uh, in the eight, amongst the eight planets we have. And that's rising in the early morning still. It's fairly close to the moon in the east on the 14th of June, mm -hmm. uh, around 3 o'clock in the morning. So if you're an early riser and driving across the forest, as we mentioned last month, you'll see Jupiter rising uh, as a bright yellowish star uh, there across in the east. Uh, next one out, of course, is Saturn, Saturn. a wonderful uh, ringed planet. Um, Actually, we've got several planets with rings, but the, the one that's best known, of course, is Saturn. Mm. This yeah. month in the constellation of Aquarius. Mm, rising just after midnight, about yep. an hour after midnight. And so you, it's best seen in the early hours of the morning. Again, telescope will show you its rings easily. Yeah. yeah. 
and the best time to see it, it's not perfect right now it's going to be it doesn't rise until midnight one mm. o'clock uh, but it's going to get better and better and better through the summer until it reaches what we call opposition on the 27th of august and opposition steve what's that opposition is when you've got in in line in order you've got the sun earth saturn so what happens is, we're, is, from our perspective, Saturn is being lit head-on, as it were. So it's brightest, its rings seem brighter, uh, because you're getting um, what, direct reflection back from it. And uh, also, that when, when the sun sets, uh, Saturn is rising, rising yep. and it's there all the way through the night, through August, mm. and setting when the sun rises. So it's the best time to see it. Indeed. We've got a few... Weeks and months to wait until uh, opposition, but uh, Saturn will be getting b brighter and brighter in the skies as we go on. To other planets, Uranus and Neptune, oh, we can forget this the, month, can't yeah, we? Yeah, they are the, the ice giants, for, yeah, they're, yeah, they're lost in the solar murk. Yeah, so let's come on to this uh, ant Aries okay. and, and our constellation of the month this month. We do like to do a constellation of the month. We do indeed. We and do. this yeah. this one is one we can't even see all of it, but it's yeah. really worth a look at. We, we, we love it. It's Scorpius, um, which is the constellation of the Scorpion. And you can't miss it. Well, you can if you've got a, 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 a trees and houses to the south, but it's a, a very nice constellation, low in the south uh, at midnight during June. Hmm. Yeah, it it is, and it's one of the constellations that actually looks like what it is. Indeed, except there's something missing. Yeah, it got hasn't got. Well, it's, it's got. If you look at the depiction of it in um, mythology now, in the in the, it's got minuscule claws, unlike any sort of real scorpion, and that's because the claws were sort of removed, as it were, to make another constellation, which is Libra. And if you look at the names of the bright stars in Libra, they are Zubanel Ganubi, which is my favourite star name, which means say that. which which means the southern claw, yeah. and Zubanel Shamali, the northern claw. So once upon a time they were all one constellation, one very long constellation, right. but uh, now they've been turned into two. It's no. pretty arbitrary how people divide up the sky. Different cultures do it differently, and this is the way we do it now. Yeah, and they're Arabic names, I believe. Yes, anything with, well, Zuben is claw, L is the, and we also find you get, you'll get other Arabic names which are common in, in stars, which is Deneb, which means tail. Yeah. So if you look above, uh, if you look high in the sky in the summer, there is a star called Deneb in the constellation of Cygnus the Swan. Absolutely, and lots and lots of Arabic lots. names mm. up in the sky, yeah. Yeah. lots and lots of them. So back to uh, Scorpius, uh, right in the very, very heart of the Scorpion, you cannot miss the brilliant star, Ant Ares, Ant Ares. So the rival of Mars. The rival of Mars. Why is it the rival of Mars? Because Be it's it's red. <laughs> it's red and it's bright. And you can't mistake it when you find um, Antares low there in the south at midnight. It's a vivid red orange color you mm. can't miss it and that's the brightest star in the constellation of scorpius yeah. uh, we call it as astronomers we call it antares of course or alpha scorpii which means um the brightest alpha is the first uh, letter of the greek alphabet mm -hmm. and astronomers use the greek alphabet to signify which is the brightest and the second brightest and so on so we have alpha then beta scorpii and gamma and delta and so on but uh Antares, yeah. really, you, you can't miss it. It's a lovely, super red giant star. Mm -hmm. And it's enormous, Steve, isn't it? Absolutely enormous. Yes, I can't remember how, quite how big it is. But, you, but it's, it goes out. <laughs> if, 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 if the Antares was in our solar system, the outer atmosphere of Antares would stretch out past Mercury, Venus, past us, would swallow us up mm. whole, out past Mars up to almost the orbit of Jupiter. It's wow. so big. That is, that is huge. But it's only 12 times the sun's mass. So with all that volume, mm. it's actually pretty thin. The, the atmosphere towards the, the outer edges mm. of, the, of uh, Antares is pretty thin well, and that's, red. Mm. Well, that's because it's coming to the end of its life. Right. We don't expect to see anything soon because what happens in stars takes millions or billions of years. 
but it's because it's coming to the end of its life what happens is these stars expand and they cool down which is why they become red they go from white hot to red hot another thing you can do with Antares if you've got binoculars or a small telescope Antares is easy to see so it's a great little marker for this just to its right you'll see there's a little fuzzy patch which is one of the Messier objects that Mark mentioned, and that is M4. It's a, it's a globular cluster, so it's this cluster of round about half a million stars in a ball. And that is very easy to find. It's a nice little thing to see. And it's easy to, because you've got uh, Antares as a marker. Yeah. You can't miss it. It's easy to find uh, Antares. Then just in the same binocular field of view, you'll see the faint patch that's M4 or Messier yeah. 4. And there's a couple of other clusters. You know, uh, Scorpius is more or less in the Milky Way, so there's, it's rich in clusters mm. and stars of all different sorts. And there are a couple of other open clusters there, also seen by Messier. So we've got yep. Messier 6 and Messier 7, mm. which are big open clusters, but they're very low in the sky, very hard to see. But it's a bit of a challenge. If you can see M6 and M7 during June and July, good luck. Yeah, uh, they, are, they are nice and, well, very low down. If you really want to see them du- well during June, you have to go on holiday. You have to go. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. And best of all, if you go to New Zealand or Australia, a bit more expensive than going mm. to Bournemouth maybe, mm. but uh, if you go down to the Southern Hemisphere, you can see Scorpius more or less overhead at this time yeah. of year. And it's a magnificent sight. This constellation so much brighter. You can see the whole of it. Uh, here in the UK, even in the, the, the south where we are, we can't see the whole constellation. The tail part is below the horizon for all the year. But when you go down to the southern hemisphere, uh, it really is a magnificent sight overhead, isn't it? Oh, it is fan- absolutely fantastic. But it's worth looking at that area of sky anyway from here, in Minocturus, because you've got the Milky Way just nearby. Yeah. And the Milky Way is almost vertical to the horizon at this time of year in the, in the, uh, in the summer summer evenings and just look at that with binoculars and you will just see literally you'll get millions of stars in a single field of view it's just like well they call it the milky way because it's a cloud it just looks like a cloud people have even mistaken it bits of it for a cloud rising over the horizon it is so bright there uh, so have a what look. about but Scorpius? We were talking about it, it, it's, it's a lovely constellation. It looks like a scorpion. How did it get into the sky in the first place? Well, the scorpion is, uh, in, in Greek mythology, it was sent to kill Orion, the great hunter Orion, which is in exactly the opposite part of the sky. So that's why they're in, op- this, why they're in opposite parts. So it can't happen again, as it were. But what happened was Orion boasted to Artemis that he would he was able to kill all the animals on Earth. He was such a great hunter. And Artemis was outraged by this. And the gods sent the scorpion to sting and kill Orion. So then then Zeus, I believe, put them both up in the sky and said, there's a lesson to you, humankind. Yeah. Don't be so. Pride comes before a fall. Indeed, it does. What happened? Yeah. So lovely. Well, we've had um, be a very short um, June evening for you. July is going to be um, similarly short, but we'll come back at the end of June, early July, with our next edition. In the meantime, of course, don't forget we have Fording Bridge Astronomers and the Wessex Astronomical Society to keep you busy. We'll have meetings through the summer. Probably not in August, but we'll have meetings through the summer. Mm -hmm. And if you need help with your telescopes, your binoculars, you want to come out and see us, uh, we meet, uh, the Fording Bridge Astronomers meet up at the Elm Tree in Ringwood uh, on the third Wednesday in the month, and the Wessex Astronomical Society on the second Tuesday, first, second Tuesday, uh, down at the Allendale Centre in Wimborne. And we love to have new members come and join us. Uh, We're a fun bunch of people, and uh, we'd love to come and We'd love to uh, to see you. So, looking forward to seeing you next month. That's it from Mark. And from Steve. Have, have a, a good summer. And clear skies. <laughs>